Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Solid Sports Podcast. Today is Tuesday, June 11th, and the Celtics are up 2-0. to zero. Yeah, it's not looking good for the Mavericks, you know. At the time of this, the time you guys see this, they'll have already played that game uh, three, uh, which I will get into later on how I think it's the most important game in the series. Uh, Stanley Cup also, Florida Panthers up 2-0. to zero. Um, Some baseball this week, a huge series yeah. out there in the Bronx. Um, the U.S. Open coming up. Um, and yeah, uh, Fourth of July might be ruined. We'll also talk about that. Maybe, yeah. All right, let's do it. We're gonna make it, baby. Welcome back to this week's episode. Uh, we have the st- skeleton crew here again. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do live busy lives. So we all live busy lives. Um, some, you know, maybe golfing. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was golfing right now. Uh, I shot so terrible yesterday. Yeah. But, I mean, U.S. Open is this week, so mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be able to watch some some good golf. There you go. But before that, uh, the Boston Celtics are up 2-0. Uh, <laughs> what, what happened to your prediction, man? Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's just they, they're they just not looking like the same team they were the whole playoffs. I mean, I know that I, we all knew that Boston was good, and I think even no matter what predictions we made, we all expected it to go six or seven. So we never expected it to be easy, but it's like, man, they just fell off, and like it seems like no matter how good they play, it just doesn't matter. And the Celtics, even when they're off, still are beating them. So I don't know, man. It's It's not looking good for the Mavericks, but – Tonight is a big game. Tonight's the deciding game in the series, I think. I think, you know, I think if... Tomorrow. Or tomorrow, yep. yep. Uh, I have a good feeling that, you know, if if, the, if Dallas can win, you know, the, I think they can win both at home. But if they lose, the series is over. They're not coming back four games. Yeah, I think, obviously, series doesn't start till someone wins, you know, mm-hmm. on the road. Uh, the way Boston looks, though, uh, we all saw that, Boston had maybe their worst shooting night of, mm-hmm. you know, they have that one bad shooting night every every yeah. series, and you know, to for the Mavericks not to win on that that bad shooting night, it, it's tough to I think mentally for them to mm-hmm. you know that they, you know, that was their kind of shot, and yeah. you know that might be over, but uh, it's kind of just been Luca versus the Celtics. Yeah, no, and you're not going to beat the Celtics with just one guy. It's just really sucks, especially looking at it as a Nuggets fan. And you look at how good the Nuggets were just all around, and you know that if they could have made it to play Dallas, I think they could have beat Dallas. And if they beat the Dallas, I think they would have had a really good series against Boston, maybe even won it. But I think Dallas right now is just struggling. Uh, I don't. There's no other way to really put it. It's just they were they've been so hot, and you start to fear that maybe the hot is starting to cool off a little bit, and they just don't have that juice anymore to keep up with a team who didn't have to get hot to play well in the playoffs and didn't play too many tough teams and kind of cruise their way to the finals, really. You know, it's one team that, you know, put everything out there to try to fight and battle to get to the spot. And another team that just used kind of their talent and just kind of cruise here. So you got to think that hopefully not, because I want to, I want this to be a good series because it just sucks when you watch a whole season of basketball and then it ends in a sweep. Or ends in the gentleman sweep. It's just kind of like, uh, unless it's your team, of course. But, like, it's just tough to watch a whole season just for it to end on just kind of like a sour blow note of just a blow up. Yeah, so far, I think, through the first two games, Luke is the only person on the whole Dallas Mavericks team that has more than one three-pointer mm-hmm. yep. in, in series, which is absolutely an insane and he has stat. Eight. Yeah, he has eight threes, and I think, yeah, everybody else. Only has one. Yeah, whoever has made a three only made one. Even Kyrie, yeah. which is – Absolutely insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kyrie has been shooting terrible. I think we got to at least mention that. How uh, the narrative can't go from Luca has no help though to uh, it can't go from they were the best backcourt maybe ever mm-hmm. to best offensive backcourt maybe ever to Luca has no help. I don't think that's fair. No narrative switching. No, I mean because you can still have help and that help have off games and not play well. You know, it doesn't matter how much help you have. If they don't play well, then there's no help at all to anybody. So, 
He's just he's just the only thing he can do at this point is keep doing what he's doing because he's not he's not the problem here at all. It's the rest of the team, so he's just got to keep playing as well as he is, and then hopefully they have a game on Wednesday where they, you know, all play well, and then they can all kind of dominate the game. But if it's gonna happen, it's gotta happen now. Yeah, no. They if they lose this game, I think they get swept. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. no, I don't see a world where they lose this game and somehow come back one series. It's impossible. Oh yeah, no, definitely. Uh, just to mention, yeah, Kyrie did say that he they would be back uh, game five. I don't know if you saw him walking off the court. He did. Someone did catch him on video. Yeah. Uh, Chris Porzingis has an injury. Yeah. Um, let's, let's let's see if I could read this without uh, sounding like Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> someone on Twitter said uh, so he suffered a torn medial. Retin- retinacolum allowing dislocation of the posterior tibulus tendon. Not as bad as I, I think I, I thought I was going to no, do. Yeah, that's pretty good. good. That, that's not English. No. <laughs> I don't that's know. medical jargon that we don't understand <laughs> as simple folk. So he might be out. He's day-to-day. Uh, questionable tomorrow. Real quick, uh, breaking news. I don't know if this is official yet. Vinny Del Negro possibly becoming the Lakers' next head coach. Uh, this nice. is, this is live. That? Uh, old Bulls coach from like a long time ago. I mm. uh, don't know how true that is. That was reported by Harrison Wind from DNVR, so very weird. Crazy. Uh, nothing obviously official yet. Might as well talk about it while we're on the subject. Yeah. Dan Hurley. Uh, well obviously, we talked about him in one of our first episodes, maybe our first episode, honestly. Uh, he is staying at UConn. Yeah, uh, smart. Yeah. He rejected a six-year, $70 million contract from the Los Angeles Lakers to become their next head coach. I think it was a smart move. No, I do too. I also learned yesterday, me and Caden talked about it, the discussion, I don't think many people realize, Jeannie Buss, the owner of the Lakers, uh, she's not very rich. No. Uh, they were talking about, like, why is, like, the cheaps, why, why are the Lakers so cheap? Because uh, I think uh, Dan Hurley got offered, like, a $100 million contract from mm-hmm. Kentucky. Yeah. And they only offered him $70 million. And they, we looked at her net worth. I think it's in its range of, like, 500 to $700 million. Yeah. Uh, that's like nothing. LeBron, no, LeBron yeah. James, her, her current player, has more money than her. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, man. It, I think when you look at the money he was given, I think it was a substantial amount of money. I mean, he was going to be making over $10 million a year. But I think at some point when you're discussing or thinking about what you're going to do there, you got to think about legacy a little bit. Um, there's been a plethora of coaches in every sport that have succeeded very well in college. And then gone on to just kind of diminish their career in the NFL. Like one that pops into my mind immediately is Chip Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he went. He did. He was doing so good at uh, UCLA. Was that where? Oh no, Oregon. Oregon. He was at Oregon. He was doing so well there. And then he decided that he was going to go to the NFL with the Eagles. And then it just kind of blew up in his face because he tried to pull college stuff into the NFL when it just doesn't work. And I think that same thing can be said for the NBA as well because like you can't really coach your team like you can in college because they kind of are all trying to make it and they all respect you as a coach and this, that, and the other. Whereas then you go to the NBA and, like, you're you're coaching guys that aren't that much younger than you on a lot of well, these teams. He'd be coaching a billionaire too. No, yeah, and I think <laughs> that's another thing that I want to circle back to and why I think that uh, J.J. Redick would actually be a solid coach for them. Uh, you can't go out and get a strategic uh, good coach – while LeBron's playing because he's more or less the coach of that team. Uh, I think what the Lakers need is a player coach, a guy who is just a couple years out of the league, knows how players operate, and can just kind of be there to coach them along that path. But, I mean, as long as LeBron's there, I mean, you're not really running the show, and you don't need a guy who wants to run the show. So I think that's why I think J.J. would be a pretty good person for that. I don't know too much about that guy, but – it seems like he wouldn't be too horrible, but it's just one of those things where I think Dan Hurley, I think he's making the right decision. I think he's built something crazy at UConn that won't stop anytime soon. And I'm sure – I don't know what he's getting paid right now from UConn, but I'm sure it's a, a decent amount. Uh, so I think it was at the end of the day it's going to be a smart decision. And also, you know, the NBA contracts are going to be there. That's not going anywhere. Like, as long as he continues to do what he's doing – at UConn, he, those are going to stay there. But if you go to the NBA, how much is it? Oh, they got it. What? Oh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> What's Dan Hurley's contract right now at UConn? Oh, he's 
uh, I actually looked it up the other day. I'll double check myself, but it's uh, six years, thirty one point two million. I think okay. I think it is something like that. Yeah. So I mean, it's lower, but I mean, like I get back to what I was saying was, you know, the NBA ch- contracts are going to be there. You know, he can keep as long as he keeps doing what he's doing. There's going to be a team that wants to pay him a lot of money to do that. But the the thing you can't buy though is building your program. And so if he were to leave UConn and then go to the NBA and kind of be okay for four to five years i'm sure there'd be a college that wants to get him back but then you got to go and you got to completely rebuild and it's going to take probably two three years before you're able to really get back into winning no i totally agree do you have the number yeah i'll correct myself it's 32.1 million for six years uh, that was that was close mm-hmm. i i flipped the one in the two yeah no no that was good yeah okay. and i don't know maybe it's just my mind as a guy who can't fathom having that much money in his account but like i think it's such a lucky thing to have like the difference in my mind is like ten million, but he's probably getting like you know two a year. It's like that's so much money oh, yeah. for somebody. So it's really at the end of the day is what you want to do, and I think it's going to pay off and be a very smart decision down the road to stay at UConn. I mean, I feel like he said he didn't want to leave several times. Mm-hmm. Me and Joey were talking about this like several times. He said he didn't want to leave, and I think he also a big thing I think about him, and I feel like he's also said is that he's more about sculpting young men mm-hmm. than being a professional coach. Yeah, yeah. a couple things I have on that. One, I, I don't know how true this Vinny Del Negro thing is. Uh, Harrison Wynn could really be joking. I'm watching Woj. I, I'm keeping the eyes on this right mm-hmm. now. I still think J.J. Reddick's the favorite in my heart. I don't think there's a way right now where he doesn't get the job. Yeah. Uh, just because uh, they're, they're LeBron and J.J. Reddick's podcast this week, mm-hmm. their episode got canceled. Mm-hmm. And, uh, nobody knows why. Yeah. Uh, I think I heard about Dan Hurley staying in – I don't think he's a, a West Coast guy. I'm pretty sure him and his wife. I, I was listening to just PFT on macrodosing. I know that he knows Dan Hurley personally, so like I, I, I could see Dan Hurley, uh, you know, geographically speaking, you know, wanting to stay on the East Coast. He's an East Coast guy, like mm-hmm. through and through. I don't think he wants to leave New York, and you never know if that or Connecticut, but like you don't even know if that that Knicks job opens. You know, mm-hmm. you never know. But like I don't know. I think that maybe this. Lakers coaching process is getting a little rough just because I, I think that I don't want to like accuse LeBron of this because I don't know what goes on obviously behind closed doors but you know there's a part of me that thinks you know maybe they're asking these coaches like yeah we got to promise that you know Bronny's coming here yeah. and that you have to be this guy that kind of develops him over mm-hmm. the years and we kind of want to keep him within the program yeah and that's not really how the NBA's worked historically mm-hmm. especially with you know guys no no one's ever had a career like LeBron, you yeah. know, besides Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan didn't have that one son that he, he had two sons that didn't live up to expectations, <laughs> but they didn't end up actually like trying to go to the NBA. Like Bronny's expected to be in the NBA. Yeah. And we've never really seen this kind of aspect or this kind of, you know, uh, situation ever happen mm-hmm. where one of the best players ever is saying, yeah, I need my son kind of promised a spot. Yeah. Which honestly, Dan Hurley might've been the perfect guy for that because mm-hmm. he knows how to develop young guys, but I don't, I just don't think he wants to deal with like that kind of nonsense. Yeah. No, yeah, you, I don't think anybody really does, and I think it's one of those things where I just I don't want. I think Bronny James has a lot of talent. I just don't want nepotism to ruin his career because he was kind of forced, not forced, but kind of ed, like pushed to the edge on some of this stuff by like maybe his dad and his family a little bit, and clutch sports, the media, yep, and just like everything else to kind of push himself to get to the NBA early when I feel like he's one of those guys who could have benefited from two, three years in college, maybe bounce around, getting into a better you know division maybe or a better conference and really just playing against good talent and kind of honing his ability against really good players. Um, so I just – I really hope that that doesn't, you know, kind of mess up his career path because it does seem right now like he's being kind of pushed to do something that's going to maybe end up ruining his career because he's not ready. He's not ready right now. Yeah. I don't think. I don't, I don't. I think he's ready. I just don't think he's. He's obviously never going to live up to the hype of his no. father. But like, I think he could be a solid role player down the line. Like I know he got comps to Gary Harris, uh, Deuce mm-hmm. McBride, more of these like smaller uh, guards that uh, they they a lot of people compliment or they give compliment on his defense. They yeah. say Bronny's gonna he could possibly be like a three and D, uh, you know, smaller guard in the league, and I, I could see that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't think it's like a he's not ready thing because I, I I do think he's ready mm-hmm. for the NBA. I just don't think people are going to understand that he's ready for 
a certain role yeah. rather than being, you know, that guy. Because mm-hmm. he, he wasn't even that guy on his own USC team. Yeah, that's pretty rough. So, but yeah, I, again, I think J.J. Reddick's going to end up in L.A. ultimately. But yeah, it, mm-hmm. it is going to be cool for Dan Hurley to go back to UConn and try to achieve yeah. a th- three-peat, which I don't know the last time that's happened. I think it's probably UCLA way back in the day. Yeah. Um, uh, last thing, uh, I thought it was kind of funny. Coach K was one of the uh, – he did was helping the Lakers on this uh, hiring process uh, of the coaches. Mm-hmm. Would it be funny if like, I know, I know part of my take talked about it and the big cat just jokes about hating coach K in general. And yeah. so do I as a North Carolina Tar Heels fan, but like coach K trying to, uh, cause co- so if we just break this down, mm-hmm. coach K writes a book, Woj promotes it. Mm-hmm. Woj drops the Dan Hurley news, you know, days after, J.J. Reddick's news got dropped by Shams. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just kind of a funny dynamic of like, did Coach K just want Dan Hurley out of the college record books? Because yeah. he could, you know, maybe feel a little bit threatened. Mm, he could, yeah. I mean, he's definitely building a powerhouse that doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I mean, we're kind of getting to the part where it feels like a dynasty is being kind of just born in front of our face. Uh, I think that's something that we can look forward to in the future is UConn being that, you know, kind of like that Kentucky team, like, how every everyone is kind of in fear of what you're doing so i think it's gonna be exciting to watch and you know with coach k i mean he might be a little scared i would be do you have the last team to go three pete only one team has gone three pete and it was ucla in the 1960s and early 70s that was lou alcender or kareem abdul jabbar as more of you may know seven oh my seven straight date they won seven straight yeah from 1964 uh, starting in 1967, the program rattled off a record seven straight titles, and the Bill Walton-led 1973 team Dang. capped off the streak by blowing out Memphis State. I was, was going to say, I knew Bill Walton was the the late end of that because I remember hearing about that after his, his passing recently. Seven is insane. That's <laughs> especially in basketball, but I I don't think one and done's really a thing back then, though. Yeah, right? probably not. No, I mean, we were, what were we talking about? Bill Russell the other day, eleven straight. Yeah, or, and that's it. Honestly, shows why it's a good thing that one and done's are a thing in the NCAA for basketball because, I mean, you'd have a team that could just keep piecing it together with good basketball players, and there would be teams that would win probably four in a row, five in a row. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dan Hurley has a chance to do that, so mm-hmm. I, I'm so rooting for him, too. If North, yeah. Car- if North Carolina's not winning it, uh, if any of our you know our teams aren't winning it, I hope Dan Hurley continues this because mm-hmm. he's just such a, a cool guy to root for, uh, so authentic. uh an old school coach, which is yeah. a, a, an old school coach and like a younger coach's, you know, mind and career. So it's it's pretty cool to see. Mm-hmm. Um, any other notes on the NBA, NBA finals? Um, I don't think there was any other NBA news. Uh, Porzingis, we talked about that. You think the, uh, you think it changes that much if Porzingis is out? No, not really. <laughs> I don't no. think so either. I mean, a little bit. Porzingis has been great. Like, yeah, I don't. But wanna, I mean, I don't. I don't, I don't think size has really proved to be the turning factor in these games. Really, I, I don't think so either. I just think Porzingis knows how to stretch the floor out. He's been great defensively too. I've he's had like four huge blocks that like have been momentum changers. Yeah. Uh, one of my uh, coworkers and friends that I was talking to, he's a Celtics fan. He said that that Peyton Pritchard shot at the end of the third quarter where he banked in like this mm-hmm. thirty foot. You know, three, we'll clip it. Where Dallas hits the two guys who've got to drive it. Like, Kyrie's got to come along. Oh, Pritchard banks in the three! Uh, he banked in, like, this 30-foot three, maybe even farther. It reminded him of that Jordan Poole shot from two years ago in the finals where he 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 felt like after Jordan Poole made that shot, he was like, okay, this, this is over. Yeah. And now he's on the good side of it where he's yeah. like, okay, my team – hits that shot, and he's like, that might be just like the ultimate gut punch of yeah. you can have such a good game and we can throw up, you know, a heave, a prayer, it's still a, a terrible shooting night, and, you know, we're going to we're gonna knock that down. Yeah. And it's it's a hard feeling because last year I didn't have to experience that. Yeah. It was the only game that the Nuggets lost, uh, you know, was game two, and after that we went, on, went three straight, and there was never that huge punch by the, mm-hmm. the heat that I – I think the the Celtics might have done it. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, we'll see tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, we just kind of have to wait and see if the if the Mavericks are going to fight or they're just going to roll over. Uh, a year ago tomorrow, by the way, Nuggets Nuggets got their first one. Uh, it's in all my memories this week, <laughs> popping up. Chills. 
yeah, the the greatest interview to never air. Me and me inside a ball arena before <laughs> being recorded by the NBA <laughs> we <laughs> communications team. <laughs> hunting a cameraman. I still need someone to find that. Like it has to be in some somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna post that picture tomorrow once it pops back up. But it's a speech for the ages, that's for sure. It yeah. was. I, I gave a great speech that if the Nuggets won, I told them they had to put it out. But they didn't. They never put it out. I don't yeah. think. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, let's move on to the NHL. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say it. Yeah, you should uh, at this point. Joey's Florida Panthers. Yeah. Uh, they're up 2-0 right now. Mm. Uh, great game last night. Uh, it was interesting to watch some of the decisions made at the end of the game. But, uh, yeah, uh, Evan Rodriguez, two goals last night, uh, former Avalanche, uh, Avalanche legend. Um, other than that, I don't – there's really not much to say The the Oilers aren't capitalizing on power plays. Mm-hmm. They had an empty net for the last five, five minutes, five minutes of the game, and a power play. Jesus. It was like a six on six three. on four. Or, yeah, six on four. Insane. Lord. I was so confused what was happening. It was a power play, five on four, and I, they. And if you know, net. if you know Edmonton's power play, you're like, okay, this this team has one of the best power plays historically, like mm-hmm. ever, and they just couldn't score. Yeah. And they had like two straight power plays going into this. There was a fight. So I think two people got sent. I think it was four on four. Connor McDavid has this, this crazy breakaway, had a chance to score to Chuck. Clip that. To Chuck. Uh, he, he puts his like stick between Connor McDavid's legs. And it was, it was like that. You, you kind of knew that that was the moment. You're like, oh, Edmonton's not going to win this game. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's looking rough. But I mean, I think the best way you got to look at it, especially maybe even as an Oilers fan, is this same exact team was in the same exact spot last year. So it's like you got the Oilers who haven't been since in, like Gretzky forever, you know. And but and then you're going against a team who is virtually the same exact team playing in it the year later. Like, that's huge. The like experience. That's, that experience is going to carry so far. And, they've you know, they've done a good job taking out juggernauts on their way in there with, you know, kind of being a little scary on some of them, but pulling through nonetheless. Um, Edmonton's going to have to pull out some magic. I think it's the same kind of Maverick situation where if Edmonton wants a shot, they have to win this next game. Because there's no coming back from three zero. I mean, you can see like a three one. You could see someone coming back from that realistically, but three zero. That's that's we'll probably never see that. But I mean, it'd be cool to see. But yeah, I think Florida's kind of cruising right now to the Stanley Cup. But Edmonton, you know, they have solid players, so you never know when they could sneak a game in. And if they win and it goes to two one, the series kind of you know is getting closer to that little reset button if it goes two two. So. We'll have to see what happens, but right now it just kind of looks like the Florida Panthers have both hands on the wheel, and Edmonton's in the backseat. Four on uh, four unanswered uh, goals last night for the Panthers. Oilers were up one uh, zero in the first. Uh, they got tied up in the second, and then Florida you know, three goals in the in the mm-hmm. third period. Uh, Bobrovsky a point nine four seven save percentage <laughs> this series. <laughs> ridiculous. ridiculous. He had eighteen saves uh, yesterday. Uh, again, I just I love the grit of the Panthers. Like I think it was was it to Chuck that just went up and just shoved uh, McDavid in the face, yeah. and them and him and McDavid. It was right after that play actually, yeah. and they got into it. And McDavid, I'll, I'll give him his credit. He was kind of, mm. kind of, you know, giving it back to him. But to Chuck, he's known for being, you know, a, yeah. a tough motherfucker. So <laughs> uh, I, I don't. They're just physical, man. And even Vander Kane said going into the series that it was going to be like one of the most physical series he's probably ever been a part of. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they were even ready for this. Like. Again, uh, uh, the series doesn't start until someone wins, you know, on the road, and mm-hmm. I still think that's true. Both of these series, NBA, NHL, they could change in a, in a heartbeat. You know, you know, never know what can happen. Injuries, mm-hmm. um, but like the way Leon Drysaddle's been playing, yeah, they haven't won a game in the playoffs when he hasn't scored. I think that goes back to like last year too. Mm-hmm. Like if he doesn't have a point, they they don't win, and he's was, he's just been struggling. Uh, Stuart Skinner, he's been struggling. My you know going into the series, I was like. Uh, the goalie matchups kind of even, but Sergey, you know, he's he's proved himself again. Where, mm-hmm. like I said last year, that uh, you know Bob on his head, <laughs> yeah, he's getting saves. He he's getting saves in any way possible, mm-hmm. and he's locked in. Uh, their their team's just all locked in. It's 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 fun to see. I I love the rats thrown on the floor. Yep, and 
You know, there's there's one fan in Edmonton that couldn't even stop this. No. <laughs> <laughs> You know, she was on Spit and Chicklets this week. Yeah, I saw that. Mm -hmm. Kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, I don't know, it's just. And then she was like trying to act like she was trying to hide her personality. And I'm like, you're, you're literally on a podcast. You got it. Right you got it. Yeah. You got to feed into that. You got yeah. to embrace get, it now. You did you get, it. If you get one viral moment, you got you to gotta, you gotta run mm -hmm. with it. We're, we're still waiting. <laughs> I'm still waiting on mine. I've had like one tweet that banged and that was it. Uh, any thoughts on the game that you watched last night? I know you got to watch a little more of it. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like Edmonton obviously can't they just can't score. This, yeah. And I feel like this probably what it was last game too. It was just seemed very Florida dominant. Oh yeah, I mean game 1 shot out. Sergey had 32 yeah. saves. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Uh Evan Rodriguez had one goal in that game too. If if Evan Rodriguez played against the whole Oilers team, he'd be up 3 to 1 right now. <laughs> it's insane, and that's just through two games. No, I think Florida's just playing great hockey right now, yeah. and it's it's hard to compete with, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sir, Sir, Sergey in the first game, thirty-two saves, uh, one thousand save percentage. Obviously, Jeez. shut him out. Uh, and then last last night, eighteen saves. Uh, you know, point nine four seven save percentage. I can't, like that kind of shows. Even he had thirty. They had thirty-two shots the first game, and then game two, they can't even get. 20 shots yeah. like I think that's showing even Florida's defense like yep. just their defensemen too uh, Barkov got fucking rocked last night I, ho I hope he's okay yeah, that, 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 was rough. that looked a little dangerous so hopefully he's able to go uh, that next game is Thursday in Edmonton uh, Connor McDavid back at home I expect Edmonton to answer I do I think I think you know, Edmonton will win game three I think the Oilers crowd is a little different than Florida's. Mm -hmm. Florida's is the same way as the Miami Heat says. Everybody shows up, you know, yeah. whether it's traffic or people, you know, living the Miami life or mm -hmm. whatever. I know it's not in Miami, but uh, I think, you know, Edmonton's crowd is going to be something for the Panthers to see. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, Mike McDaniel, uh, Dolphins coach, he got his first playoff win. Yeah, he, he was did. he was there beating the drum before beating the game. The drum, yeah. So uh, <laughs> count that in the stats for the Miami Dolphins too. <laughs> they might need it. Uh, any thoughts for Game Three or just going forward? Uh, um, you know, I I do agree with you know Edmonton's you know fans and the atmosphere definitely being a little bit tougher for the Florida Panthers. But I've seen nothing thus far that shows me Edmonton has any fight left in them for this i don't know i think the panthers i think i can see edmonton maybe winning one on the road on at home but i i think they'll sneak one they'll lose game five or six i don't know it just doesn't seem like edmonton's got it but it, i mean i i think that's less to do with edmonton and le more to do with just how good florida's playing right now you know i think they've just been cruising they're a tough team to beat and nothing in these first two games has shown any fight out of edmonton you know, I think, you know, it was 1-1 one, one for most of that game, and then they just kind of, like, gave it away, and the Florida Panthers took a, took it. So, I don't know. You can't give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So, I don't, I, I don't see Edmonton really coming back in this series unless, like, something really crazy happens. With a uh, Canada team looking to finally get, you know, their first cup in a while, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's obviously special for them. But uh, USA over here, you know, we want that on our side, and we might need it. Yeah. Um, because Fourth of July has now been ruined. Yeah. Uh, my my name buddy, uh, fellow fellow Joey Joey Chestnut has been banned. Fellow Glizzy Gobbler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa, <crazy. laughs> I wouldn't say fellow dude. The, the graphic used on on uh, Bleacher Report today, where it's just banned. And it's just him stuffing hot dogs <laughs> in his mouth. One of the funniest pictures I've ever seen. So why why is he? Doing? So the reason I read it is he agreed to partner or he, he got a bag from yeah. impossible foods which is mm -hmm. you know the impossible mm -hmm. burgers yeah. impossible meats whatever the whatever yeah. they are which is weird because uh, what is it what's the name of Nathan's Nathan's yep. Nathan's is also partnering with making like an impossible burger yeah. so it doesn't that doesn't make sense to me mm. but that was the reason he got a bag and Nathan's didn't like that and so they now banned him from the only the only reason that people watch that competition. So what I'm picking up is that Nathan's Ballpark Franks or whatever their name is are communist. Yeah, they're that's the only viable option. Communist, terrorist, anything mm -hmm. that goes against American soil. If there's an ist or an ism there, they're, yeah, they're, them. that's them now. They're racist. We're yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that word? We're not eating them anymore. No. 
We're, we're not supporting Nathan's no, hot dogs no, anymore in tow. Nor should anybody. Yeah. They we're hate eating, America, so we're eating impossible dogs. Yeah. yeah. I think even David jo- I think even David said, No, we need to make it zero viewers this year so yeah. we can make a point. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean Jesus, it just it doesn't make sense. It, it, like, with, <laughs> that's, that's, the only, that's the only the reason people watch it. Without him. That's like literally like put, putting together the greatest players in NBA history and not putting Michael Jordan on the list. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, why not have the guy who draws your view? And also, it's like, well, he partners with Impossible Burger. It's like, so do you. I was like, so, so do you. But it's also like, even if that's a competition for you, He's literally going to come and make you guys a ton of money. So, like, what's the what's going to happen there? I don't know, man. This is ridiculous. I hate this. Great headline. Uh, <laughs> Joey Chestnut gutted out of hot dog contest over beef. <laughs> 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 literally over impossible that's beef. awesome. Yeah, literally over impossible beef. Uh, really funny. But, yeah, it just sucks. Like, that's... That's the only reason people watch mm-hmm. that is yeah. to watch to the goat. The own oh, you know who you know who has to be so mad mm. Vegas. You know, you know how many people bet on Joey Chestnut's like lines last two years mm-hmm. for like trying to get that record. When do the lines even come out though? Oh, they're probably out on like the probably second or third of July. I'd imagine it will. They won't be anymore. Oh well, yeah. yeah, not for Joey Chestnut at least. <laughs> A sixteen-time champion of the Nathan's Famous Hot Dog Eating Contest got banned for getting a bag. Unbelievable. That just. It just doesn't sit well. It would. Be, it, this is literally the quote, like you just said. It would be like Michael Jordan saying to Nike, "I'm going to represent Adidas," and I, I get that. I, I that's I get it. That's crazy. But it's that's basically also saying the NBA wouldn't broadcast Michael Jordan's <laughs> yeah, games. Dude. That's pretty much is what that's like going along with. Yeah. I know. I'm not gonna watch this shit anymore. There's no way. I'm so mad. Like yeah. one of the best. <laughs> sorry. Sh- read this meat eaters shouldn't have to be exclusive to just one wiener <laughs> <laughs> impossible there's a quote impossible foods told espn that they support chestnut in any contest he chooses and that quote unquote meat eaters shouldn't have to just be exclusive to just one wiener oh, that's God. the impossible <laughs> that impossible quote? impossible Fire. foods told espn <laughs> Yo, impossible oh foods God. is definitely on twitter great joey chestnut quote horrible dating advice yeah <laughs> 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 terrible dating advice uh they so apparently, with this being said, he would have to compete in a rival unbranded hot dog eating contest on Labor Day, which is not till September. Mm. You so know what that, he should that's do? The, that's the end of White Boy Summer. He, no. It's literally Labor Day. <laughs> he should be. He should get all the guys together and make his own thing. Yep. Joey Chestnuts on July Fourth. Joey Chestnuts, Glizzy Gobblers. <laughs> I I mean, dude, he is he's, Glizzy Gobbling Jamboree. He's a sixteen time nice. champion. That's like if the Lakers and Celtics were in championship right now yeah. and, and the NBA was like nah they both support e- eating vegan <laughs> that's what, exactly what, what, what fucking sense does that make <laughs> I, I'm like very upset right now that's the only thing I look forward to on 4th of July we literally the white boy summer cannot catch a break it, you know we get the zins back we lose Joey it, yeah it just it hurts it hurts a lot <sighs> yeah 4th of July is ruined at least I'll hopefully be at a concert on Fourth of July and you know see the fireworks and whatnot. But this de- this definitely puts it. Those, those fireworks are gonna be a lot more hollow than they usually. Oh are. my gosh! It's like in the middle of the day. What do you do? It, it comes on at like eleven to noon yeah. every year. His his nickname is Jaws. That's funny. Um, <laughs> it's on at like eleven to noon every year, and everybody mm-hmm. is a. I remember at work last year, we were all surrounded around a phone. Mm-hmm. Watching Joey Chestnut on on ESPN. <laughs> no, dude, it, it's just not gonna hit like fireworks and all the stuff we're gonna do won't hit the same. Knowing that there isn't a, a random goat out there somewhere with horrible stomach pain, pounding Pepto Bismol. They better put this shit on like Tubi or something. ESPN better retaliate. Yeah, because the, there's no way that this should be. Well, because no one's who's gonna watch. Who's gonna be in it? <laughs> Who no, knows anybody else? No have, one we know. They have the big dude that does like the lemonade chugging contest like before oh yeah i forget his name he Big is like chug or something yeah like he's kind of famous mm-hmm. other than that i don't know one other person there was a there. one guy who used to do it I, he was a famous like eating contest guy but i don't think he does it anymore one guy just passed away too like some legend that mm-hmm. does like eating contests and stuff yeah i don't even know man i'm yeah i'm gutted yeah I'm over wieners oh, it's terrible <laughs> wowzers <laughs> Sad. pause you know uh, you know what i meant fourth of july <laughs> hot dogs god damn it um all right uh, let's talk about a very important baseball series that happened over the weekend. Um, Colorado Rockies. Yeah, <laughs> Colorado Rockies versus whoever the hell they played. Yeah, I don't even know. Uh, the Braves getting swept by the Nationals. I think it was the Pirates. I think it 
was the Pirates. Yeah, Bray. Okay, hey, 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 leave it alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to Scott Fitzgerald, rock, rock solid fanatic. <laughs> he finally got a shout out. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to what, what's David's dad's name again? Brian. I'm talking to Brian. <laughs> I knew that. It just it skipped my mind. I'm talking to you, David. <laughs> Isaac, if you're listening to this, your Yankees suck. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, it was a it was a good series. Uh, first game was really close. It went all the way to like the 11th inning. Um, Dodgers barely squeaked that one out. Mm-hmm. Uh, game two, Dodgers beat the shit out of the Yankees. Uh, Aaron Judge had two homers. Didn't matter. Teoscar Hernandez did too. His counted for more. Uh, you know that's what happens when you get guys on base. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so you should talk to you know Rizzo especially. Oh my <laughs> lord, that dude had a rough series. Um, and then the Yankees to win game three. So like they, they didn't get the sweep, but it was cool to see the two evil empires kind of play each other mm-hmm. and. America had to root for both of them to lose, and that just couldn't happen. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that both can come out with wins, but uh, I don't know, man. It's just the Dodgers are getting hot, and you know that they're one of those teams where when they get hot, they're pretty hard to beat. They're pretty hard to top. So, I mean, the Yankees are are solid right now, but you know, it's just they they ran across a hot Dodgers team, which is a very difficult team to beat. Say, Oscar Hernandez did win NL Player of the Week after. I think he had three homers in two games, and one of them was a grand slam to kind of put the game away. Yeah. Uh, he had a great series. Mookie, finally, he's struggled against the Yankees like yeah. since he's been on the Dodgers, so it was kind of cool to see him get his uh, his like one RBI. <laughs> yeah. uh, Shohei hit a homer. That was cool. That was in the same game as Judge did. Uh, Judge had two, though. Um, but yeah, it was just it was cool to see all the stars out, you know, and and Anthony Rizzo. Yeah, uh, I wish Juan Soto <laughs> did play. Uh, I also do wish the Yankees had you know their two of their pitchers i don't think garrett cole or stroman pitched garrett cole still hurt yeah. uh louis gill their rookie he's fantastic he he pitched in that last game um but uh yeah it was it was cool to see all the stars it, but the dodgers were missing kershaw and shohei pitching mm-hmm. too so i, I just want to mention that yeah but yeah to see that i it, this is hopefully you know one day it, this needs to be the the world series before all these players are kind of yeah. retired and gone just the star power yeah no all it will take is both teams to stop choking before they get there it, it will take the astros and then the astros not to be in it in the al and then anybody in the nl west to not yeah. be in the playoffs for the dodgers to make it yeah i mean you got a pretty good shot there i mean what are you you're fine with the rockies <laughs> why why do we need to include them <laughs> No we're, offense. Hey, hey, we're hey, dangerous. You're repping. Don't let us don't let us get hot. We yeah. might sneak up in there. Yeah. Dude, would you like to know how many wins you have right now? Uh, well, I'm gonna guess sub twenty. I don't even. I can't even pay attention. Would you be surprised if I said over twenty? I would. I think you guys have twenty three. I think that's the amount of home runs that Aaron Judge has this <laughs> season. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Um, God, we're so good. <laughs> uh, now the Dodgers are sitting at forty one and twenty six right now, second in the NL. Padres are seven point half games behind us, and Giants are eight games behind us. Mm. I expected the Giants to have a better year than they did. Yeah. I also expected the Diamondbacks to have a better year, especially after making it to the World Series last year. Yeah. And bringing in like Jordan Montgomery, they brought in free agents. I don't get it. Uh, at the top of the AL right now, it is still the New York Yankees. Uh, they're sitting at forty-seven and twenty-one. Um, so, and then yeah, Philadelphia Phillies still sitting upon or at the top of the NL. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the Braves struggling now nine games back and yeah the Mets suck too jeez oh my baseball sucks this year <laughs> yeah, dude yeah it is not it's not doing good the Braves I think will get back at some point I think I don't want to say that losing winning the series is out of the question because we're so early but I don't know it just kind of seems like we'll have to kind of start really turning it around and Phillies will kind of have to drop off for us to do that but um yeah, I mean they'll get their strides. Just right now, they're just kind of off. They lost. Do, the best do you know player. the Do you know the score of the game right now? Uh, for the Braves, yeah. I can look. Four zero, Baltimore, Atlanta. Nice. Baltimore over Atlanta. That's kind of how it rolls, man. That's what they've been doing. They just got their shit kicked in by the Nationals for three straight games. So I hey, respect the Nets. No, twenty twenty nineteen <laughs> World Series champs. I I think. You don't even have to check that. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> good news for the, the Rockies right now. You guys aren't losing. Mm. You guys aren't winning, but you're not losing. There oh, it'll change <laughs> very shortly. <laughs> zero, zero, top of the six. Uh, top of the six. There you go. By the top of the eighth, six. Hey, two zero. on, zero outs. Anything can happen. Believe. Not the Rockies. Who are they playing? Uh, the Twins. Twins. 
Twins are good this year. Too. <laughs> yeah, they're cooked. Um, Dodgers have a series versus the Rangers, uh, World Series champs from last year. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm excited to watch that. I think I think we have one televised game this week. So yeah. um, and uh, Georgia, unfortunately, Georgia and Mississippi State are both out of the College World Series. I saw that it is that Kentucky now. and Florida, or Kentucky and Tennessee. Um, I'd have to check. I didn't see what happened in that Tennessee Evansville game. Which so I think it's Tennessee, right? Yeah. It's college baseball score. Oh, I thought I thought Kentucky was Oh, that was just regionals, wasn't it? Mm-hmm, yeah, they're in super regionals right now. Oh yeah, it's Tennessee versus Florida State on Friday. And then later this week is when the College World Series starts. Mm-hmm. Kentucky uh, first time I think making it to super regionals like ever. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Tennessee did beat Evansville. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know. Evansville is hot. So super regionals this is just pretty much like a final four. That's mm-hmm. what I'm getting at. Yeah. Or Elite, or elite eight. eight. Elite eight. Yeah, so now it's Virginia, North Carolina. Florida State and Tennessee. Pick one team to win, just randomly. Just pick off the top of your head. Uh, give me Florida. <laughs> okay, cool. I got Tennessee. All right, I got to go Tar Heels here. You know I have to go with them. So <laughs> let's roll. All right. Uh, any other news before you guys want to get the segments? I think I'm all good. I don't think so. Nothing I can think of. <laughs> we'll talk, obviously talk about the gambling corner on about the U.S. Open. Did you see all the, the pictures and stuff come out from Scotty's? Arrest when the the cops like pants and stuff, oh, and no. his, his little his like cut. his little cut. <laughs> no, that was so guy. funny. <laughs> what, a, what a fucking idiot! What did he, what did he think was gonna happen? He I was actually know. get the best golfer in the world like convicted of something. Yeah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know. They all got dropped, right? Yeah, they all got dropped. Um, all right, let's get to this segment part of the show. See you on the other side. Yep. Summertime is here, and there's no better way to get it kicked off than buying some Slav merch. They just had a new drop. I've had the chance to see it myself, and it's really awesome. Everyone should go out and definitely cop a piece. Right now, they got a deal going on in the store where if you buy the full sweatsuit, you get a discount on a lot of select items in the store. Uh, are you ready to spread love? Join Slove in creating a world where love triumphs over hate and fashion meets compassion. Follow them on Instagram at slove.co or their website, slove.us. That is S-L-U-V dot U-S. Welcome back to the segment part of the show. Today we have more gambling corner. <laughs> yeah. Can't stop me, baby. When will it stop? Uh, gambling corner, and we'll get to what's back at the end. Uh, hopefully, shit out of luck question next week. Back, mm-hmm. we'll find out. Um, all right, gambling corner. Uh, we're doing the U.S. Open this week. It is a major. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is a major. It is a major. It is a major. That's why we're doing it. I mean, we got yeah. stuck with what? What was the one two weeks ago? 302. No, that no. was last week. And no. then there was the one the week before. We had another gambling corner, which was golf. But it wasn't a major. Oh. Oh. I don't remember what it was. It was terrible. Hold on. No, it's all good. Who cares? <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're living in the now. That's all that matters. Okay. Damn straight. All right. So we're doing the U.S. Open. We, ha- we got stuck with it. You know, we have to do gambling corners for the big events. Yeah. This is a major. Uh, we're all golf guys, so this is this is huge for us. You start us off, Jackson. All right, so I got a little four legger this week. I oh, mean, also, also disclaimer. Oh yeah, we're not professionals. Do not take our advice. If you take our advice, that's your own problem. All right. Bingo. So I got my little four legger this week. Uh, it's it, high odds, but mainly because of one person. So uh, top five finish, I got Scotty. I think you know Pinehurst number two. It's a very, 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 very difficult course that will crumble a lot of people uh, i think scotty it, it will rise above that and i think he i think he'll win but i'm just going top five just in case because you never know what's going to happen uh collins been right behind scotty so often he gave him a run in that memorial tournament um i think he's going to finish top five as well he's a hot golfer right now i think he's gonna be doing good uh and then top 20 i got sahith the gala I, I love the way he's playing i think he plays well out of a lot of kind of bad situations. I think he finds his way back. You said top 20. Top 20. I think that's a pretty safe bet. And then the bet that I think is the long shot for sure. Um, I do have Tiger coming to the top 20. Ooh. I think that, you know, it. like I've said before, this is a, this is a, <laughs> this is a course that um, – you have to be very good at, and I, th- you know, he, he. I think the last time he won the U.S. Open was 2008. Um, but I think he he is due for a good tournament. I don't, you know, I think his days of being due for a win may be in the past, but I think he's due for a good tournament. And I think as a veteran coming to this course, as a guy who's played it a thousand times, it feels like I think he's going to come in well prepared. I think he's he's feeling better. I got a good feeling about him. I got him in the top 20. 
So, uh, for Scotty, go top five, minus 170. Colin, top five, plus 250, uh, which I feel like are pretty good odds to ride that because of how good he's been playing. So, you eat the gala, plus 160 to make top 20. Again, think good odds. Tiger Woods jacks up this parlay with plus 500 to make top 20. I know on ESPN bet it's plus six, 650. Uh, but right now I got a $15 on the four-leg parlay for $1,300. Jesus. All right, let's hope you win. Drinks are on you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Caden, your picks for Gambling Corner this week. Me and Jackson had the first same thought with Mr. Scheffler. Mm-hmm. I got Scotty going top five. Uh, he's got a little more faith than in Colin than I do. I got him going top 20. Um, I got Xander Shoffley going Shuffle, top. Shoffley. Shoffley. Going top 20 as well. And then... And then I got Victor Hovland going top 40. Just it, it bumped up my odds just enough to where it made me happy. There you go. And that that puts uh, the in a parlay. It's 458. This is on DraftKings. Xander's minus 200 for top 20. Scotty's minus 140 for top five. Collins minus 150 for top 20. And then Victor's minus 330 for top 40. I like it. I, th- I think I think it's a very safe bet, but I like safe bets. Mm-hmm. I do too. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, good, good, good corner. All right. Um, I only had three picks, uh, two in a parlay, one single. Signed the same as I did last week for UFC. Mm-hmm. I won. I won the parlay. There you go. Lost a single. Won the parlay. My parlay. Would it be really bad to say I'm doubting Scotty Scheffler this week? Really? I. It would be. I've been seeing videos of these greens and just knowing uh, turtleback greens, knowing how he struggled on putting, mm-hmm. not really recently, but at the start of the year off, uh, I know Pinehurst greens are just, they're rough. They're, yeah. they're for, very difficult for those who don't know about Pinehurst. Number two, it's like one of the hardest courses in the country. Yeah. Uh, they have a thing called the turtleback greens, which means that the pin is like sitting on top of the green and everything around it falls down into the rough. Mm-hmm. So if you don't put it, Perfect. A good, like, five, six feet next to the pen, it's going to roll off. Which really worries me about Scotty Scheffler. Mm-hmm. Two guys that didn't worry me about. Uh, I watched Colin Morcar last week. He impressed me a lot, mm-hmm. uh, especially on Saturday. Uh, not Sunday, because he kind of he, he could have had a little better yeah. round and probably won the Memorial. But Saturday, he really impressed me. Uh, he, I have him plus 320 for the top five. Uh, I also have Xander Schauffele as well. Uh, but I have him top five. Uh, did you have him top five? No, I have him top 20. I have him top five at plus 220. I put that in a parlay. Uh, that went up to plus 1244. Uh, $10, do- uh, $10 pays out $134.40. Uh, I'm really confident in those two. And then I'm sticking with my guys. I'm not going to bet on Max Homa this week. He's had a rough couple weeks. It's a major. I'm going to do it again. He's due for a major. Brooks Kepka mm. winner. Oh, you're betting on him to win the whole thing. Plus 2200 Whoa. I don't know. I, I have, that, that's going to be a tough one. I, I, I stick with my guys, and one day it's going to pay off. Yep. Uh, Brooks is due. He always is really focused in, in the majors. His Florida Panthers right now yep. looking good. Mm-hmm. His wife was just in the Sports Illustrated body issue. Mm-hmm. Looking uh, good. Looking good. <laughs> looking very good. Uh, so I think Brooks has a lot of good momentum on his side, maybe from outside of golf, mm-hmm. um, but also – I mean, who cares about watching live? But like, he's been playing decent uh, since the Masters. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I haven't really watched live because who does? But yeah. Uh, I mean, I just seen his scores recently. I I am confident in him. He always locks in the majors. I feel like this is a perfect course for him. Mm-hmm. He's really good in tough courses. Yeah. Especially you know Augusta two years ago before finally choking on Sunday. He mm-hmm. was the leader the whole week. Yeah. Um, until your guy John Rahm uh, ended up winning that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Rooks Kepka plus 2200. I don't know what the unit I'm gonna put on it yet. Let's look. Put ten dollars on it. It's 230 bucks. Um, you never know. I think that's what I might do. So yeah, uh, Brooks Kepka uh, plus two, uh, 2020, 2200, and then yes, Xander Shoffle plus 220, and Colin Morikara plus 320, both to make the top five mm-hmm. uh, wrapped up. So I couldn't be more excited. I, uh, I know uh, the. That's going to be the chat around the office come Thursday, you know. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I have Friday through Sunday off this week, so I won't have to <laughs> – I won't be subjected <laughs> to watch it at work, uh, which is good. So, um, all right, that will wrap it up for Gambling Corner. We'll definitely recap uh, our winners 
or losers next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did have you know some winners the past couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. I'm slightly, I'm, slightly. Yeah, I'm hoping for us to finally reel in a big one with mine. I'd, I'd love that. I'd, I'd I'd love that for the for the whole program. I would love <laughs> that for. The, the, the drinks that night, <laughs> <laughs> if you were to pull off that. So yeah, Monday idiot. morning will be a little rough, probably. If that well, is, hey, that's okay. <laughs> you live and you learn. You live yep. and you learn. No, we live. We live. We don't learn. Yeah, we don't learn. We d- we do learn. What's the point of learning? Nah, none. Why well, not just keep making the same mistakes all over again every single week? And that's what gambling's all about. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, let's get into the what's back segment. Uh, what is your what's back of the week, Jackson? Uh, mine, Scotty. You know, after you know a little bit of a hiatus with you know him having his kid and you know getting arrested and kind of having a, a kind of off. I won't. I, not bad, but you know, just kind of like you know an off couple weeks where he just wasn't doing much. I think he's finally gotten back into his stride, like we've said he's going to uh, in the past couple episodes. So I think he's finally going to take this momentum. I think he's going to carry it into the U.S. Open. I think he's going to win it. Um, I just He's unstoppable right now. I don't see a way that he doesn't win majority of the things left in the year. Um, so I think he's finally back. We finally got him back after you know that little hiatus. So I think we're in for a good ride for the rest of the season. I agree. Uh, I, I, like I said, I don't think Scotty's going to win this week. He's the best golfer in the world. I can be proved mm-hmm. wrong. We got proved wrong about, I, I think, only twice this year. I think we said about yeah. two times that we, we didn't really bet on him. Obviously, I didn't bet mm-hmm. on him this uh, coming week. But I I don't know. It, it's going to be interesting. He's still on a fucking heater. So, mm-hmm. like, I'm not doubting him. I'm just saying I think this is going to be one of his hardest challenges of the year so far, yeah. uh, especially no, definitely. with a bunch of people kind of heating up at the mm-hmm. moment. Uh, you know, Xander finally getting that big one, and you know yep. he's looking to add up to that. You know, yep. add, add another one. More cars been on his tail all year. Uh, yeah, no, Scotty is back though. Memorial, mm-hmm. he played great. Yep. That's a tough course too. Yeah, uh, what's that one called? Uh, it starts with an M, doesn't it? It's Jack Nicklaus's course. Yeah, um, Mahalas. I don't know. It's literally on. I could see it. It's, don't even say it. I mean, you can figure it out. But, uh, yeah, it's that's going to make me so mad once you say this. Let's, let's get there. <laughs> Murrayfield <laughs> Village Murray, Murrayfield, Golf Club. Murrayfield Village, yes. Murrayfield. That's, it's, on, it's at my job. Like I can see it. <laughs> uh, that is a tough course. So the fact that he shot, it was only minus seven, but he shot pretty well above the whole field. So, mm-hmm. uh, he, yeah, Scotty is back. And <laughs> I, don't, I, think, I think he's getting to the point where he might not be back soon. Like, he might just be here. Yeah. He might be arrived, so. Uh, we'll figure that out hopefully this week. Caden, mm-hmm. your what's back? My what's back is Madden covers. They just released, I'm pretty sure today, the Christian McCaffrey Madden cover of him running away swiftly from the Raiders defense. And I I just said it a minute Damn ago. Damn Raiders catching strays. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> um, I think that's going to go down as one of the best Madden covers ever. I think it's so cool. Yeah. So hard. It's the first one in a while that I can think of that had like a multiple people in it and yeah. like him, like proving how, like his, his Elusive, skills, elusiveness. And stuff, yeah. his elusiveness, you know, that how a white man runs a football. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know. I agree. I agree. I think this is the first cover since that has two people and I could be mistaken, but since Tom Brady and, and Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, but yeah. they were kind of like just sitting up next to each mm-hmm. other, not like in action yeah. in game action. So I, yeah, I agree. It was a really cool uh, cover. Hopefully he doesn't get the Madden curse. You know, he's a 30-year-old white running back. Uh, I think I think he's gone through enough. I think he's he's had his... He played for the Panthers. Yeah, he played for the Panthers. He's he played had for his, David Tepper. He's, That's he's, enough. He's had his injuries. I, I think the Madden curse has been pretty tempered for a while. It's mm-hmm. not really struck anybody too hard, but... Patty? Who was on it last year? Josh Allen. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, and like, I, when that, I think Madden curse, I mean, I think, like... After injury. He became like, Deshaun Watson after. Yeah, but I mean, like, Whoa. injury is what. I, yeah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> he sucks now. Oh, uh, okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> a crazy person to reference. <laughs> but no, I think, you know, he didn't have the best of years, obviously, but I think when I think Madden Curse, I think injury, not yeah. making playoffs, well, playing coming, whole just whole terrible. Yeah. yeah. He and he's do- he's going to be on that same loaded 49ers squad, so. Yeah. I didn't say Josh Allen was doing the same things before he was on the Madden cover. <laughs> that is so. true. I, I did. This is a terrible flashback all the way to the beginning of the show. I did see a tweet that was like Brock Purdy is or Jason Tatum is just Brock Purdy. <laughs> it's how bad he's been playing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it's going to be a great Madden. Uh, only thing I'm still confused about: 
we're in Madden 25. There's already Madden 25. Why didn't they like change the name or something like Madden? Um, I think they're banking on everyone just kind of being okay with it because <laughs> I think well, no. technically it was like Madden 25th anniversary, <laughs> but it was called Madden 25. It was. Yeah, it was. I wonder what they were thinking when they did that. Like they didn't think for 13 years ahead or 12 or whatever. They didn't think no. they were going to make it to Madden 25. <laughs> for some reason. Shit, they might not with, you know, <laughs> college football coming out. Yeah. Uh, we'll find out. True. Hey, don't forget about maxim- maximum football coming out as well. Oh, yeah. Come Can't on. sleep on that. Didn't even know that was a thing before you they said They just it. dropped the trailer the other day? Yeah, well, I don't. I actually looks What is it, like the XFL or something? No, it's just like it's like random teams, but like they they have like a really big like creative team thing so you can like create any league and all that stuff, which granted, had it dropped like a month or two ago, maybe. It would have done numbers for people wanting a new football game until NCAA. Yeah. But now they're going to be competing with NCAA and Madden. That's not a competition. Yeah, not at all. But a month from this Saturday or a month from this Sunday it comes out. Mm-hmm. And then early July we get to do Team Builder. Yeah. That comes out. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh my what's back uh this week. Uh love. Not for me, sadly. Uh Rory McRoy, his divorce got called off with his wife. Uh, I think I touched on that like last week or two weeks ago, uh talking about how Rory sucks and he deserved it. But uh, he got his wife back, so yeah. Maybe he promised a U.S. Open win, so we'll see if he plays plays pretty good. I, he's never he's never won a major while married. He's won like three while single. So Jesus, man. He, he couldn't have held off <laughs> for like one more week. Bit. One more week. Jesus, he just didn't need this news to come out. You what know? an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, at least love's back for him. Now that kid's gonna have two parents. <laughs> Ridiculous. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> this is a bad time to do th- <laughs> this segue that I was about to do. <laughs> really bad, really bad time to do that. It, Joey. That's what you do. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, fellas. Uh, make sure you guys go wish all your fathers a happy Father's Day this weekend. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. You got you put you put it there. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't I know didn't. that was your transition. Oh, was good. Good. Great comedic time. I'm glad yeah, me. yeah. No, it's good. Um, I was. We're gonna wrap it up. So I'm just gonna. Yeah. Make sure you guys go tell your fathers happy Father's Day. Uh, I didn't. We forgot to say Happy Mother's Day last time, so uh, we we had to make sure to do it this time, mm-hmm. uh, this Sunday. Make sure you go out, you know, get them a gift, uh, you know, for whatever your father figures in your life. So um, means a lot to them, means a lot to us. Um, and yeah, even if they're not here with you, make sure you yeah, represent mm-hmm. them well and do what they would want you to do yep. uh, going forward. So I mean, that, that's what paying the respect is for. So um, yeah, any other thoughts going into this weekend? I'm going to Zach Bryan on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm excited. Okay. From my experience of when I saw him in uh, Wyoming, that's one of the best concerts I've ever been to. And Revival is, I'd, I'd tell anybody, that's probably the best concert experience you'll ever have in your life is Revival. I am, I'm having a feeling the, the new cover of Madden might be the guy who's up there with him. That'd be pretty cool. So, Castle Rock native. Yeah. So you never know. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he did post a, like, a happy birthday to him like, last week to, to Chris McCaffrey. So. Yeah. No, the world is kind of crazy how like, when I was a freshman in high school, I watched some dude hurdle another guy on the cast of you Sabercats field. And now he's the cover of men. So yep. life comes at you quick. Pretty cool. Yeah. Any, any like last predictions on who might be like the revival performers. There's two nights. Uh, my, my initial thoughts was either Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey, and sadly Bo Nix. I could see all those three. Yeah. Any other guys that come to your head that might, you know, be on stage performing this weekend? I mean, if Bruce Brown was still here, I'd say him. But I saw he was in Jokic. He was in Boston. <laughs> no, I didn't. That, that dude is not coming back to the United States for <laughs> you know, five, four or five months. Didn't he post something on his story asking for a tea time in Denver? An early tea time, and then I Did just it? saw Bruce, Bruce Brown Bruce. yesterday. He posted that, and then he, about an hour ago, he posted a picture of him at Fenway Park. So, oh, interesting. Never mind. And Kyle Schwarber hit a first pitch homer <laughs> at, <laughs> at the game, so I hope he got to watch that. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. Any any last predictions? No, besides Bruce Brown, he's more of a Luke Combs guy himself. My my prediction like was gonna bro. be Peyton. Peyton. I like Peyton to go out there. Oh, if John Elway is there, I'm gonna fucking be so pissed. Um, <laughs> I, donkey I, I, teeth singing <laughs> out there, man. All right, <laughs> uh, any last words to the people? Get it out. Uh, tell people you love them. Yep. Happy Father's Day. Yep. And rest in peace, Fourth of July. Yep. <laughs> All right. Tell somebody you love them. Might just make their day. Peace. Peace.